So, I'm still coming down from having the flu last night, so, and, ugh. Um, I know I don't sound great, but, hey, uh, the show must go on, as always. So, um, in my, in, when I gushed about Ed, Ed, and Eddie in a long, in a 12-minute rambling video, I talked about, like, how I should do, like, a, like, talking about how cool another show from Warner Brothers was, and that was Duck Dodgers, which... I talked about how, like, I was just scrolling through, like, bl like blue or something to add to the Blu-ray collection, and I was very close to getting, like, something like, I don't know, Courage the Cowardly Dog Complete Series or something else, and then I saw Duck Dodgers, the complete animated series on Blu-ray, and I went, <gasps> that's it, that's the what I want, <clears throat> and lo and behold, it was what I got. So, Duck Dodgers, the the series. What was Duck Dodgers? Well, Duck Dodgers was a cartoon from the early 2000s uh, where it was basically a reboot of, it was another Looney Tunes cartoon that essentially focused on Daffy Duck, and here he's focused on his persona of Duck Dodgers in the 24th and half century. In here it's a little different, where it kind of goes the Futurama route, where Dodgers was, was kind of like, like I said, with Futurama, where Essentially, Dodgers gets frozen in, in, in an accident um, as a water boy for a football team, and he's awakened for, in the 24th and a half century, where he lies about being like this great hero, and is made a, a captain in, the, in a space fleet. And he also has Cadet, who is Porky Pig. Um, the, his main enemy is, Mar is um, Marvin the Martian, who is Commander, I believe his name is, he's called Commander X2. But the main thing was uh, Queen, uh, the Martians were at war with Earth, and they're being led by Queen Tyranny. Um, let's just get this out of the way now. Let, let, let's talk about Queen Tyranny now, like, because I know it's gonna be, I know it's it, like we're all gonna make those comments. So I'm just gonna get that shit out of the way right now. Yes, everyone was down bad for Queen Tyranny. Like, there was no way around it. Like, everyone was essentially down bad for Tyranny in it. Yeah, um, and I'm because like, have you seen how she's drawn? Like, I don't know how like censors at the time were like having not having a problem with that. Like, the Egyptian kind of see-through garments, uh, the barely there bra. Um, it's very clear that um, the animators want it, like we're helping some kids with uh, puberty. They wanted to, and uh, yeah. So, I think it like you I couldn't do this video without talking about tyranny and like however and also fun fact, she was voiced by I can't remember her name, but most of you guys would know her best as the girlfriend to Wayne in Wayne's World. She's an actual singer and she does a great uh, in here there's a great rendition of that she sings of Blues in the Night, which is a great rendition and yeah. Not to mention, there's a, a, like, now, let's get on to the main thing of this. This show was so fucking unhinged, I don't know how they got away with stuff. And, like, it's very clear Warner Brothers did not give a shit about what they had, because, like, everything was, like, a reference, or, like, a crossover, or, like, they had everybody. Like, hell, they literally brought in, did an episode where they brought in Dave Mustaine and subsequently Megadeth to, um, fight with hard, with heavy metal. Which yeah, let me say that again. Dave, Mas they literally you have an episode where they cross over with it with Megadeth. Not only that, there was also an episode with Green Lantern, the Green Lantern, where um, where Dodgers finds Hal Jordan's costume in a washing machine and takes his Green Lantern ring and then goes to Oa. Which again, why is Hal Jordan alive in the twenty fourth and a half century? Don't think about it. That's that's literally what this show's whole thing was. Don't think about it. That's. That was what the mantra they run it ran on and didn't give a shit about. So that was their thing. Getting back to the Green Lantern episode, that literally had Hal Jordan voiced by Kevin Smith. You had Kilowog and Kat Matui, both voiced by John DiMaggio and Tara Strong. Also had Chip, who I think was voiced by um, Frank Welker. And Sinestro voiced by goddamn John Delancey. I'm not making John Delancey Q voice, and yes, I know someone's gonna say Discord from My Little Pony, but yeah, John Delancey voices fucking um, Sinestro. Not only that, they literally do an episode where they bring up the Bionic Man without saying it's the Bionic Man, and I'm like, even as a kid, I was like, 
Who the fuck, like, what kid is going to re realize this is a Bionic Man reference? And they actually had the actor and actress who played the Bionic Man and woman, respectively, <clears throat> as those characters. Um, there's that. <laughs> um, what was another episode that was just fucking crazy? There was another one that had, what's his name, from Smokey and the Bandit in here, as well as Dom DeLuise playing a pair of gangsters, like lizard gangsters. Uh, um... <clears throat> Then, I, I'm just listing through all these episodes that were just so insane. And that was the thing. Like, again, going back to what I said is, this show pre ran on the predication of, don't even think about it, just enjoy. They did a reference, to, they did a whole episode that was a reference to fucking Samurai Jack. And that's the other thing. Happy Cat. Happy Cat, voiced by goddamn um, Ma Mako from, you know, Aku and General Iroh. Uh, <laughs> ha 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 ha. You think I go away? I never let you sleep again. Ha ha ha! It's this this show will would never get away with this stuff today. Like there is no way on God's green earth half the shit you see would be would be permitted to the, today. And the jokes were like they hit. Like every joke hits on every level, and it's actually fascinating of how good the writing was there was also like the fu the fud which i don't know people have said like that's a reference to the flood from halo or the borg from star trek like people have said like two, that's what they were referencing is either the borg or the flood or hell it could easily be both like who the who the hell knows really this show was more or less focusing on da like Daffy as Duck Dodgers, and it's kind of cool because they could and they do bring in a lot of other characters. Hell, like there's an episode where the um, the cadet's nephew, ne like three nephew, two nephews and nieces show up, and they're all voiced by the Warner kids. I'm not making that up. And there's a great joke in there where like cadet's telling a story, and he's like, "Oh yeah, it's all nice and happy." Then the next day, you're handcuffed to the radio with the car gone. I'm not bitter. <laughs> it's like jokes, like the comedic timing on the uh, on this show was like brilliant. So yeah, this series was it was an underrated classic. This was an this was an underrated gem, and I'm so glad it got a DV, it got a Blu-ray collection release. Because uh, I was thought I feared it wasn't because I didn't see it on Ma HBO Max. I think it was there initially, and then they took it off forever. So it was really cool that you know. Um, I got a Blu-ray release uh, for uh, for the series, and the Blu-ray case is not great, but hey, it's something. Yeah. So yeah, what is this whole the whole point of this video? Go fucking watch Duck Dodgers. That's all I can say is just go the fuck now to watch Duck Dodgers. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed the show, if you enjoyed that series, let me know in the comments below what were some of your favorite moments. Uh, just comment below, let me know. Other than that, hope y'all enjoyed this. I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.